We are dealing with the Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area outside of Anaconda. So we'll zoom into California Creek uplands where we did some steep slope erosion control, try to revegetate and stabilize um, some very unstable volcanic tuft. So you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen, kind of along here, you can see this old swale looking thing. It actually wraps through that valley. It's an old plume and it comes back around. And that's what they used turn of the century to, to move logs off the mountain to fire the smelter. And if you zoom in to the center of that whole eroding slope, you can see the remnants of it. And that's most likely what blew out originally and resulted in these gullies forming and continuing to erode. So this is a this is a high interest area because it contributes an enormous amount of sediment down the drainage and plumes into California Creek right in this big flat white wasteland. So originally the plans were to build several large check structures, engineered basins working up the bottom of the drainage. There's, I believe there's three large rock checks and then we we determined that we could get away with some more hand manual labor up higher um, incorporating some some check structures some fertilizer and seeding and some uh, erosion fabric. So you can see this is what we're kind of dealing with beforehand um, Pretty bare, pretty steep. Those, some of those gullies get into 10, 15, 20 feet deep. These rills are, you know, several, several feet to five feet deep in between. Um, so the idea was, if we start at the top of the hill, establish vegetation in the upper reaches of this drainage, we might be able to uh, stabilize, um, stabilize the soil at the at the uppermost reach where the water starts to erode down and, and kind of channelize into the gullies. Um, so if we switch to the post effort images, um, you can see there's some strips at the top of the drainage. Right away you can see difference in, in vegetation. Some of this is attributed to the work we've done, fertilizer, some of this is attributed to the seasonality of the images. But you can see these strips, we call them nature band-aids. Essentially it's three um, small trenches ripped across the slope approximately on contour you can kind of see kind of make out the three lines along each of these band-aids um, they're just they're just ripped trenches hand trenches this is really easy soil to work so you can kind of just do it with a shovel um, and then we sprinkle fertilizer and seed throughout the trenches and then throughout the entire slope in between all those band-aids and then seed it with a native mix of uh, cultivared varieties that have been bred for you know, lower organic soils, high acidity, um, you know, all as much ideal traits that we can kind of uh, muster. But essentially the idea was to kind of make micro swales and vegetated strips to initiate stabilization of the slopes and we covered those trenches with an erosion fabric to prevent um, the wind from you know blowing the seed away uh, to kind of shade and protect you know the early germinating seeds and also to uh, to uh, actually if you know in effect have a little bit of a boost to stabilize the tops you know the soil itself so you can see right here this is a great great um, image of how bare it was. You know, this is an older image from 2013, um, and then we did the work in September of 2015, and this is just in October of that same year. So you can see quite a difference in terms of vegetation that's spreading. The band-aids, you can see some vegetative strips. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, this I misspoke. This image is actually from July of 2016. So this is about 10 months post construction. Um, you can start to see a little bit more vegetative establishment. The band aids are, they did pretty well. They didn't blow away, they, they stick to the ground. Um, we ended up incorporating 
a few other techniques. Let's see where we can find one. Maybe scroll to the left a little bit. So, yeah, if you zoom in right about here, you can't make them out too well, but these are little burlap plugs that we put in the middle of the rill um, in, a, in an attempt to hold the fabric down, but more importantly to act as a little check in the structure in the band-aid itself. Um, we use parent material to fill uh, recycled coffee bean bags and fertilize the material and add seed on top and then kind of plug it into the into the coir. Here's a good example right there. You can see it's kind of plugging up and you can see a little tuft of vegetation growing right above it. So it is working in, in you know local local areas to try to stabilize the re the, the rills. Um, lower down our, our efforts kind of right where all the gullies need a confluence you can see all this brown slash it's just just started to uh, drop its needles we use lodgepole as a uh, bioengineering material to essentially act as a engineered brush fascine we we uh, install duckbill anchors with cable about four feet into the hillside and then use the in, in about five six feet apart and then we we actually anchor large bundles of brush to the slope right kind of at the bottom of the toe slope or right above the toe of the slope and it any any sediment that's actively coming down these rills these little hillsides get trapped behind these brush fascines stabilized gives it a chance for any seed that is moving down the hill to to actually get a foothold and establish before it just gets you know eroded right off the slope again and then in between these scenes right in the trench of the gully we would lay out erosion fabric and build check structures most of these structures are log um, materials are mainly logs that we would Fasten into the bottom of the ravine, and then, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we'd fasten into the bottom of the ravine, and then build up accordingly um, to try to try to essentially match the grade of the structure above. That way, we're kind of getting a step pooling terrace effect, just to reduce velocity, allow sediment and any moving water to settle out. Um, allow the water to percolate in so it doesn't just run right off the surface. Much of the issues you see in this project site is strictly because the water is moving too fast. There's nothing living to slow it down and hold it on the landscape. So when it's kind of a, a negative feedback loop. If the water doesn't have a chance to, to soak into the soil, it's going to run off the surface, channelize into these gullies, and with the high velocity of a channelized water source, it's going to scour down even further. So the attempt is strictly just to keep the water on the surface longer. That way it doesn't have such of a scouring effect to the, to the parent material and the soil itself. And in doing so, it engenders better conditions for vegetation to establish to further kind of promote the positive feedback loop that we're aiming to, to uh, create in this sort of setting. So ultimately we're seeing some improvements, especially from the fertilized areas, the band-aid strips. You know, there there isn't significant quantifiable sediment traps in these band-aid areas, but that's mostly because we haven't had too many significant storm events in the you know the ten months since installation. Um, but for the most part we are seeing pretty good changes, pretty positive changes in terms of vegetation quantity as well as species diversity.